Hi. This is David Shukoff, Director of Education at Manhattan Theatre Club, and I'm delighted to welcome you to this segment two of MTC Education's online family drama playwriting workshop series. Uh, today, I'm going to do a couple of warm-up exercises to get your creative juices flowing a bit, um, and also to we'll introduce a couple of activities that will um, get us started you know, focusing on creating family drama, which is the central idea of this whole sequence. So for this first activity, uh, we call it chair transforming. And um, what you'll need is a chair, um, something light and sturdy, uh, no arms if possible, couches not recommended at all. Okay, so find yourself a chair and if you're with a bunch of people, um, so to try to get yourself separated uh, from one another. Okay, and now I want you to just sit in the chair. A stool is fine, by the way, if you haven't found a chair. Um, but sit in it just in a kind of a neutral way. Get yourself centered, get yourself focused, relaxed. And now what I'd like you to do is adjust your position in the chair to express how you're feeling right now. Everybody, no need to talk. Just adjust yourself in the chair to express how you're feeling. Okay. And now what I'd like you to do is sit in the chair to express how you felt on the happiest day this year. Okay, now the saddest. Okay. And now I want you to sit in a chair in a way that you've never sat in a chair before. Just find some new way of sitting in a chair, something you've never ever done before. And again, just by yourself, no need to talk, just figure out how to sit in the chair in some new way. Okay, done that. Okay, now another new way of sitting in a chair. Okay, and another new way. Okay, and now... Uh, it's the Indy 500. This this chair is your car, and there's one car to pass before you get the checkered flag. Go! Faster! You're gaining on it. Go! Okay, and now it's the old Wild West, and this is a stagecoach, and the bandits are right behind. Go! Faster! Use the whip! Here we go! Okay, and now the chair is Mount Everest, and you have almost reached the summit. Okay, the chair is your home. This is your whole home, this chair. Again, just do this by yourself. Don't worry about what anybody else is doing. Just find a way of making this chair your home. Okay, now the chair is a tool and um, find some way of demonstrating how to use it. Don't think too hard, just let the chair sort of share how it wants to be used as a tool.
You got that? Okay, now you are an alien from outer space and this chair is some part of your anatomy. So explore the room, alien, uh, carefully, of course, but move around the room. This chair is some part of your body, some part of your anatomy. Or maybe you want to greet your fellow aliens, but be cautious. Okay, and now you're on your own. Find another new use for the chair. Keep thinking, you know, not thinking, just letting the chair suggest how you can it can be used. Is it an article of clothing? I don't know. Okay, another new use for the chair. And another one. Okay, and now go back and do over the one that you like best. Um, you can press pause, you can refine, you can polish, and share with the people in the room with you, if there are any more of the folks online, share your favorite use for the chair and when you've done that, you know, come back and we'll go on to the next activity. Okay, so we're back. Um, this chair exercise um, develops a capacity that psychologists call fluency, which is a kind of a fancy term for finding multiple solutions to the same problem. Uh, it's an important uh, capacity to exercise, especially if you're trying to, again, develop your creativity, um, is useful for any kind of, you know, creative uh, endeavor like playwriting, for example. So maybe while we're all self-isolating, uh, every morning when you get up, you could try to figure out another couple of new uses for a chair or some other object. Okay, so um, moving on. Now we're going to get more focused on something closer to the idea of families. And in fact, it's an activity that um, I call family brainstorming. And it's a fluency activity, an imaginal fluency activity around the idea of, of, um, of, of family. So you'll need either a keyboard and screen or pencil and paper. And by the way, it's probably a good idea to have those items, you know, either a, a, a keypad, an iPad, uh, a keyboard, um, or a computer, or pen and pencil, you know, have them ready uh, whenever you come to these sessions because we'll be using them a lot going forward. Okay, so now here's the deal. Um, as soon as you've got your pen and paper, your keyboard, what I want you to do is for the next, uh, let's say, 90 seconds, when after I say go, I want you to make a list of words that come to mind uh, in response to the word family. That is say, anything is fine, just write down these phrases triggered by family um, and don't stop writing. Uh, we'll go, as I say, for 90 seconds, I'll keep time. Don't think too much, just whatever comes to mind, write it down, but keep writing for 90 seconds uh, in response to the idea of family. Ready, go. Okay, that's half a minute, so you still got uh, another minute to go. Keep writing everything that comes to mind when you hear family. Keep writing. Keep writing.
keep riding. We'll go for another 10 seconds, 15 maybe, yeah, 15. Okay, five, four, three, two, one, pencils down. Okay, now what I'd like you to do is um, share your lists with each other. Um, just um, turn to your, your friends uh, either online or in the room with you and st just read out what you wrote. Don't censor yourself. Okay, so you just push this on pause and when you're done, come on back. Okay, and we're back. Are, are you all still talking to each other? I uh, hope so. Um, was that interesting? Uh, were any words unexpected? Were there any interesting overlaps? Any words that showed up on multiple lists? Um, anything to observe about the sort of the list from different generations? I don't know. Um, Hang on to those lists. In fact, what I suggest you do at this point is uh, create a folder, either electronic or physical. Put the your lists into that folder and hang on to all the creative work that you produce in the course of these uh, of these workshops. Okay, so our final creative task for this segment. Uh, we're not quite ready to create drama yet, but I would like you each to write a poem, okay? And I'm going to give you three titles, three possible titles to work from, uh, topics or, or subjects or titles for your poem. So here the, here's the, the first one is photo album, okay? Photo album, that's the first topic or title. The second is family ties, chains and shackles. And the third is family ties, roots and wings. Okay, so photo album, family ties, colon, chains and shackles, or family ties, roots and wings. So take one, or you can write in all three uh, of, of those subjects, those titles. Uh, and you're going to write a poem. Now, what's a poem? Well, in 2020, basically a poem is whatever you say it is. Uh, you can write a haiku, you can write a sonnet, you can write an epic poem, you can write three lines or three pages. Whatever. If you say it's a poem, it's a poem. Okay, so um, go ahead and write that and uh, write that poem, and as I say, uh, share them out with each other. Um, write in all three if you're inspired. And indeed, if you're looking for inspiration, um, let me refer you to some terrific, fa terrific family poems that I personally like and that you can find online. Um, there's a poem called Lanyard, L-A-N-Y-A-R-D, Lanyard, by Billy Collins. There's a poem called First Thanksgiving by Sharon Olds. Um, there's The Race, also by Sharon Olds. There's The Continuous Life by Mark Strand. So Lanyard, First Thanksgiving, The Race, The, conti uh, the Continuous Life. So write your family poems, share them with your family and friends, and if you'd like, post them to your Instagram tagging Manhattan Theatre Club at MTC underscore NYC. And in our next uh, family drama segment, we'll continue with some of these warm-up activities and begin to, le to explore the idea of creating dramatic characters. So, see you next time.